Hi, I'm Johannes Bechberger, and in this talk, I'll be showing you how to write the Linux scheduler in Java with eBPF. In my day-to-day -day work, I work on the OpenJDK, so I work directly on Java. But today, I'll be showing you how to write your own Linux scheduler in Java with eBPF. But first of all, what is scheduling? Um, so what scheduling is, it solves the problem that you have multiple processes on your system and multiple CPUs and you run, want to run all these processes at the same time, but you can't. So you have to decide which process comes on to which CPU core at every point in time. And that's called scheduling. So consider we have two processes, process A and B, and, and only one CPU core. So a simple scheduling policy would be just to let process A run all the time. The only problem, process B would be starving, which is not that great. So what typical schedulers would do, they would, for example, start with um, scheduling A for a specific time slice, then scheduling B and so on, and maybe process A has a higher priority of or then process B or process B can only wait so uh, on IO so the schedule decides to schedule A again and then maybe B again and A again at the end. And this um, ensures that process B and A um, are responsive and can run alongside each other. So what I did now I created um, a project where you can simply implement a Java interface called scheduler and implement a few methods um, that relate to scheduling and then have your own a Linux scheduler written in Java. And the cool thing is this runs on this machine. So you see here, these are the current um, statistics updated every five seconds for this machine um, printed by the user level part of the scheduler. So what is the performance? Um, it's actually not that bad. Um, and I didn't see any negative effect on the performance while running a typical Java benchmark and it runs good enough in common use cases. But of course, it's not as responsive as a proper a scheduler would be. But why would you write the scheduler and why is it good that it's now possible uh, with SCADX to write your own scheduler? Um, to quote Tejan here, one of the developers of the scheduler extensions for Linux, um, it assures an ease of experimentation and exploration, so you'll be able to easily experiment with different scheduling policies. It allows you to customize um, your scheduling policy, for example, to target your own needs, because the um, common Linux schedulers, they were good for a broad range of applications, but they might not optimal for your current situation, because they don't have domain knowledge on your current situation, of course. And of course, because it's all written in eBPF, as the title suggests of this talk, you can rapidly deploy different schedulers without restarting your system, which is pretty decent. But how does it work under the hood? So what you have, you have parts of, you have Java code and parts of it will be run in user land and parts in kernel land. And the code run in kernel land essentially allows you to describe C code and Java code. So you have this part of the Java code then um, compiled down to C code via my project hello eBPF and then the C code is compiled to eBPF by code and is loaded into the Linux kernel via the libbpf and then attached to the scheduler extensions to create your own scheduling policy and these then schedule all the processes and of course also the process on this is on this very system where I'm doing this presentation. Now you probably want to know all the code and here it is. So I start with the, with the base structure. You have a class, I call it here sample structure and this class extends the EPPF program and implements the scheduler. We first define our um, scheduling QID because we want to have our own and then we define some types. Here we define the type stats which essentially contains the stats um, that we later store per CPU and whether it the, um, the process on it come from a local or a CPU uh, global queue. And then we have to initialize our scheduling queue by SCX BPF create DSQ. And what we do here, we, we overrode the init method of the scheduling interface and thereby providing the scheduler with some with this function. 
Then we also want to define some eBPF maps essentially for statistics. Um, and these are the statistics that you saw before printed on the command line. And then what we also want to do, we want to select the CPUs for every task. And this is done by internal methods, but usually what one would do is to check, hey, is the CPU that um, I selected um, idle? So it's currently not executing anything. If yes, then we can directly dispatch the process on the CPU and go like the fast track. Of course, we also have the case where a process is enqueued, where a process runs to run, and we first um, increment some stats and record the enqueue, so, so guard some information that we later log, and then we just dispatch it to our queue that we created before, and every time a CPU wants to run something, because it's the, the previous process finished is time slice, just call um, SCXBPF consume and tell it, hey, just consume a new task from this queue. But you may ask, why would you write this whole thing in Java? And of course, the simplest answer is why not? I think eBPF is currently in the phase of exploration, where many people try interesting things out, like creating their own schedulers or creating their own firewalls. Um, but also it probably helps, it probably will help in the future people with testing because testing um, Java programs for things like race conditions or deadlocks, it's pretty difficult and it's hard to reproduce these concurrent settings. But if you control a scheduler, you can essentially quite easily create a library combined with a, a normal testing library like JUnit in Java case um, to better be able to test concurrency bugs. And that's pretty awesome. And also to reproduce them later to check that they didn't occur before because you essentially can control the scheduling order of the processes in data of your Java threads, for example. You might also want to know whether we can already use it because I teased that it's in the scheduler extensions. So when will the scheduler extensions be part of the Linux mainline kernel? Because they aren't yet. Of course, you can get uh, um, a patch kernel. You, com you can compile it yourself or um, install the Cache OS operating system that I'm currently using to use these kernels. But in reality, you probably want to wait um, till it's in the mainline kernel. And it's not yet there, but when Linus Torvalds was asked a couple of weeks ago when it will be merged, he answered at the Open Source Summit in Asia, I will not what because I was sure it was going to be in 6.11, but yes, looks like we're now looking at 6.12. So it will probably be in 6.12. It's unsure uh, whether there will all be features and they'll probably be missing some features um, that you want that you might want to use for more complex schedulers, but still um, you can probably in a couple of months be, be able to use a standard mainline kernel to do this. And that's pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion. And of course the underlying library that I developed for um, running eBPF applications from Java and, from comp and for compiling um, some Java code down to C code is called Hell eBPF, as I told you before. And it's a library that they created um, in the last eight months. It's still a prototype, but it shows some promise because it allows you to write, as you've seen, um, eBPF applications directly in Java without writing that much C code in a string. And that was it all for me. I, I hope you saw now that scheduling, writing schedulers is possible in Java with eBPF. If you want to learn more, um, I just wrote a blog post um, that's on my blog mostly nerdless.de that you find under this QR code that I've presented um, on this very topic where you see all the informations and all the links. Um, I myself want to say thanks to Dylan Ryman who helped me with the whole eBPF library and also to the people from the SCADEX chat. They are pretty lovely and they answer every, every question. It's pretty cool. And of course, I want to say thanks to my team at Submachine that allowed me to do this as a side project. And thanks to you for, for coming with me on this short journey. And maybe I'll see you somewhere else soon. Bye.